Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirashesha Sunyavari, Pastyatya De Sitarne. Vansha Kalpa to Rupis Chakri Pasindu, Veva Cha, Putitanam, Bhavane Vyo, Vaishnava Vyo, and Mahonamaha. Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadakar, Srivasadi Gaur Bhaktarina, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ajahn Lambita Bujal Kanakama Dako, San Kirtanai Pepita do Kamalaya Taksa. Vishwambaro, Dvijbaro, Yugadharma, Palo, Vande, Jagat, Vyakaro, Kuruna, Vataro, Vande, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Nityanando, Suno, Dido, Varo, Daya, Pushpan, Vanto, Chitta, Sando, Temo, Nudo, Vanchitat, Vamakam, Krishnam, Bhakti, Rupa, Swarupaka, Bhakti, Avataram, Bhakti, Kyam, Namami, Bhakti, Shakti, Kam, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vansari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So yesterday was somewhat of a festival day with the appearance of Harumanji, appearance of Shamananda Pandit and Ramsi Vadana Nanda, along with Balaram's Rasayatra. So we spoke about Balaram's Rasayatra yesterday, and I thought I'd speak today on uh, Shamananda Pandit. <laughs> um, it's interesting. There are the variations in the account of his life and how the different details played itself out. And that's pretty much expected due to the, what we say, the mystical aspect of his uh, development in spiritual life. But there are some of the narrations of his life are consistent. Others have a broader perspective, others have a limited perspective. But the essential principles I'll try to present that is more consistent with the modern day presentations of his life. Um, Shamananda Prabhu was originally named when he was born Duki Krishna. His parents, his mother's name, his name is Durika. His father's name is Krishna Mandal. Uh, they live in the place called Devendra, something Devendra. Um, and he grew up, but he was named Duki Krishnadas because his parents had eight children that were born still, we call it stillborn children, the, born, the baby comes out, but it's not alive. And so uh, his parents were in quite distress, one baby after another coming out, uh, stillborn. So upon the birth of Duki Krishnadas, they gave him that name Duki to mitigate their sadness because they were thinking this one is also going to give us some distress. You may not live easier. But to their 
happiness. He actually grew up quite nicely and developed a natural taste for, for spiritual topics. He would like to hear about Gornitai, also about Radha and Krishna. And he became very interested in Shastra. And many times when he would hear about Radha and Krishna and Gornitai, he would shed profuse amounts of tears. His parents were really overjoyed to see his spiritual life develop that way. And one time they recommended when he was a young man that he take initiation. So he had heard about one great soul, whose name was Ridai Chaitanya. Ridai Chaitanya was living in a place called Ambika Kalna. Now Ridai Chaitanya was a disciple of a very glorious personality whose name was um, <laughs> let's see, all of a sudden I forgot. His name was hmm. uh, what was his name, Vivek? The Gori Das Pandit. Okay. His name was Gori Das Pandit. And uh, he was Subal in Krishna Lila, one of the most intimate of all cowherd boys with Krishna. He was so intimate with Krishna that he would even assist Krishna in his Madhurya Lila pastimes. A few of the cowherd boys had that uh, quality that they were so advanced and they were also slightly in the mood of Madhurya Ras. And this was uh, this was Subal, who now appeared in Krishna Lila, uh, Lord Chaitanya's Lila as Gauri Das Pandit. Gauri Das Pandit was an interesting personality. <laughs> um, he uh, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda actually came to his home and stayed there for one month. After one month, they decided that it was time to leave. But Guridas had developed such an attachment to, to Gornitai that he didn't want them to leave. In fact, his attachment was so strong that he forbid them to leave. <laughs> he was acting more in the role of parental ras, saying, you cannot leave. I'm not going to allow you to leave. <laughs> so they decided to um, give him a, an option. So they said, we will leave uh, duplicates of ourselves in the form of the deities. And these deities will be non-different from us. And you can worship them. And if you worship them, he was like worshiping us directly. So they transformed themselves into two deities, separated themselves from the deities, and started to leave. Glory does immediately spoke up. No, you can't go. If you're not different than the deities, you stay and let the deities go. And so Gornitai stood like deities, and the deities started to walk away. And then he saw, oh, the deities are going. But then now they're going to tie. But going to tie can't go. So you can't go. And so back and forth, they kept switching between the deities and the original forms of going to tie. After a while, Gori Das Panda became so bewildered, he couldn't tell which were the original set. And so after some time, he couldn't do anything. And so those deities are still there in Amika Kalna, in the home of Gauri Das Pandit, being taken care of by his ancestors, who are also wonderful devotees. Uh, to get darshan of those deities is an interesting experience, because when they give you darshan of these, these Gauri Thai deities, they only open the door of the deity room for approximately 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's even a long time. They'll open the door, you'll see the beautiful forms of Gornitai, and then they'll close it real quickly. If you pay your obeisances when the door opens, you'll miss the darshan. <laughs> so what happens is the devotees 
don't pay our basis because they want to get the darshan. And then when the doors close, they pay their basis because they're afraid that Gornitai, if he sees, if they see a pure devotee standing out there looking, they will leave their deity room. And so in order to prevent that, they give a very quick darshan. So we were there many years ago. I can't remember the year. I think it maybe was back in the, uh, I can't, I don't know, somewhere around 2004 or something like that. I can't remember the exact year. But we had a good chance to see these deities as they opened the door. But they were very kind to us. They kept opening and closing the door. And so we, we were able to get our hearts content, full of darshan of these these Gornitai deities, which are non-different in the in essence, because no one knows which of the actual deities, which is Gornitai, when they actually departed from the home of Kuidas Pundit. After some time, one person, his name was Ridoy, he was performing kirtan on the bank of uh, the Ganga River, which is right there, near, near the house. And these deities, mm, well, we're now in the house of Goidas Pandit, when they heard the kirtan, they left the deity room and went down to the kirtan and started dancing in the kirtan. When Goidas opened the deity room, the deities were gone, and he was looking around. So he was thinking in the mode of a parent, he took a stick and he was looking for Goidas Finally, he heard the kirtan, followed the kirtan, and there they were dancing. When Gornitai saw Goridas coming in a very uh, stern mood, coming to get them, they became a little concerned. And uh, Lord Chaitanya jumped into the heart of Ridoy, or uh, I mean uh, Chaitanya. And later on, he received the name Ridoy Chaitanya, one who has Lord Chaitanya in his heart. And Lord Nityananda disappeared. So that same Bhidoy Chaitanya became the, the guru of uh, Duki Krishna dance. And then he studied nicely under his uh, spiritual master. At one point, Bhidoy Chaitanya wanted to train his disciple further. She said, you should go to Vrindavan, try to meet Jiva Goswami and work under his guidance. He is a great scholar and let him engage you in devotional activities in Vrindavan. So study unto him and learn as much as you can. So following the instructions of the spiritual master, he happily left for Sri Vrindavan down. And he stayed under the care of Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami gave him some service that every day he would have to go and clean the area of Vrindavan. So one evening, it was in the evening time, he came and he had to clean the area where it was called Vamsivad. Vamsivad is the area where um, Radha and Krishna performed their uh, rasa dance. In fact, even today, nobody goes to Vamsivad in the evening time because it says if you go there in the evening time, no one sees you again. <laughs> uh, it's a very mystical place, and you can go there and you disappear. You, this is a continuous thing. Anyone who goes there in the evening doesn't is never seen again. <laughs> they don't know what happens to them. So it's a very mystical place. And basically the story is, if you see Radha and Krishna in this dance, then um, therefore that will be the last thing you see. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a private area so one day when he was cleaning the uh, this was the next morning actually he was cleaning the uh, the kunj and then he looked down and he saw something very effulgent and he looked closer it was an ankle bracelet he picked it up and looked at it it was really effulgent he touched it to his forehead and looked at it and said this must be belong to someone very special at the same time, in another place, Radharani, she's talking to her 
girlfriend and sometimes assistant, Lalita. And he said, Lalita, last night when I was with Krishna, I lost my ankle bracelet, my Nipora. So please find it for me. So Lalita went to that area. But in order not to be detected, she changed her form into an elderly lady and she was looking around. Looking around, looking around. Um, Tuki Krishna Das, he was thinking, who is this? This lady is looking, looking, looking. So he decided to approach her. My dear elderly Mataji, I can see you're looking for something. Something is lost? Oh, yes. Actually, my mates, my, my master, she has lost her Nipur ankle bracelet here last night, and I'm looking for it. Oh, I know where that ankle bracelet is. Oh, you do? Yes. And who is your master? Well, actually, my master is Srimati Radharani. Oh, he was shocked. Radharani lost her ankle bracelet. And who are you? I am Lalita. No, you cannot be Lalita. You don't look like it. I am. I have disguised myself. I am Lalita. Well, if you can prove you're Lalita, I will arrange for you to get the ankle bracelet. I know where it is. And then she said, well, if I do that, and you see my form as Lalita, you will not be able to bear my beauty. Transcendental beauty is way beyond material beauty. Material beauty is just external. The real beauty is the beauty of the soul. The soul has all good quality and the soul is by nature very beautiful. And so when the soul takes and enters into the body, the body becomes attractive. The body is not attractive in and of itself, but when the presence of the soul is there, which gives life and animation, illumination to the body, then the body becomes attractive. So sometimes people's bodies, by material arrangements, are very attractive, but because of the presence of the soul. <laughs> so Lalita said, well, if I do that, you will not be of my beauty. He said, well, I'm ready. So she changed her form into Lalita. When he saw that, he was uh, unable to keep his consciousness. Her beauty was beyond any description, and it was powerfully spiritual at the same time. And he lost consciousness. He just collapsed. <laughs> When he returned to consciousness, uh, Radharani was also there. And then Lalita told Radharani the whole story. Radharani, uh, of course, he, re she re he, he, re he gave back the ankle bracelet bra the bracelet to Lalita, who gave it to Radharani. Radharani was so pleased with him. Uh, I think he faced, fainted a few more times in between there after seeing Radharani. <laughs> So it was really an emotional scene, which is being described very succinctly in this narration. But ultimately, he was overwhelmed with love. And Radharani was overwhelmed with gratitude, receiving her ankle bracelet back. She took that bracelet and pressed it into his forehead, which made a particular type of tilak. And she said, because you have given me pleasure, your name is now Shamananda, one who gives happiness to Sham, Shama. And then they disappeared. <laughs> and now he has a new name and he also has a kind of a tilak. Jiva Goswami was wondering what happened. And then, of course, he revealed what happened. And Jiva Goswami told him not to tell anyone else because they would not be able to believe what you say. So after some time, he returned to his spiritual master, Day Chaitanya, and now he has a new name. His name is Shamananda. And he, he noticed that that mark on his head, which looked like a type of tilak, but was in the shape of an ankle bracelet, the impression. And so he asked him, 
but he was too embarrassed. And at the same time, he wanted to keep it secret because actually Radharani told him not to reveal this. And so he kept quiet. But Vidaya Chaitanya was adamant, thinking that maybe Jiva Goswami has changed the name of my disciple. And now he's giving him a, some special kind of Vrindavan Tilak. <laughs> and so he was a little bit angry by the whole situation. And he started to threaten uh, Shamananda in so many ways. But Shamananda remained humble and took all the chastisement from his spiritual master without revealing what happened. And then uh, Vidai Chaitanya went to sleep one night and Lord Chaitanya appeared to him in his dream and said, actually, yeah, Srimati Radharani has blessed him Please don't chastise him. The story, he he doesn't want to reveal this story because it is Radharani's wish. Mm -hmm. So then he became Shramananda Prabhu and uh, Pandit and later on preached in a place called Utkala, Utkala, a place in Arissa where he made many disciples. In fact, he practically made the entire area of Utkala devotees of Krishna. And he produced one very powerful disciple whose name was Murari, also known as Rasikananda. And uh, this the life story of Rasikananda has also been written in one book, which is available within our Iskhan society. But this is a, this, a quick narration of this story of how uh, Duki Krishna Das became Shamananda by the grace of Srimati Radharani and uh, later on became a great proponent of religious teachings all over the area of Arissa. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Very nice pastimes. Um, thank you so much for narration. Um, I request devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, they can go ahead. It's a nice story. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So, Guru Maharaj, where is yes, Guru Maharaj? Um, yeah. Shamananda, Naratam Das Thakur, and Srinivas Acharya became close friends and the three of them traveled together throughout uh, the area of Bengal and also preached Krishna consciousness there. Uh, and they also helped to arrange for the printing of the Goswami books. Some of the key books such as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Ujwala Nilamani, uh, commentaries on the Acharya's works. Chaitanya Chari Tamita. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions or comments or uh, realizations? Hare 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I'm so sorry, Vivek Prabhu, I just saw you had your hand up. Please go first. Go ahead, Radhavati, since you began, start and continue. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I, I feel like I read Guru Maharaj somewhere that um, Shamananda Pandit came into the world to preach the glories of Lord Jagannath. And I don't remember where I read or heard that. Do you know of anything, any such connection? I've never come across that in my reading, but he, he was preaching in that area of Orissa, which was right there in Jagannath Puri area. Jagannath Puri is in Orissa. Um, the actual details of the preaching that he did there is not so much written about. Mostly we hear about his disciple, Rasikananda, what he did in that area to spread Krishna consciousness. But um, I'd be interested in hearing what you know about it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Gramesh, I don't remember now where I heard this, but I'll see if I can dig into that a little more. Okay, it's not unlikely because of the area he was preaching in. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think the time period was preceding, uh, mm -hmm. let's see, this was around the end of the 1500s, the, 16, the end of the 16th century. So it was after the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, it was at, he was, he was present at the same time as like Jiva, Jiva Goswami, right? They have a connection. As well. Jiva Goswami was the, young, the younger, yeah. Jiva Goswami was quite elderly at that time, yeah. He was the, uh, the youngest of the, the Goswamis. I think Ruben Sanatan Goswami had already left the planet. In fact, they, they had just left the planet around the time when Srinivasacharya, uh, Narottam Das Thakur and, and Shamananda came together to meet Jiva Goswami. The three of them, they met Jiva Goswami in uh, Vrindavan. And then that, he gave them another mission to bring the books and have it copied. And that's a whole story with Donald that centers around the life of uh, Srinivas Acharya. So yeah, Jiva Goswami outlived, I think, all of the other Goswamis because he was the youngest. <laughs> he was there later. <laughs> But it wasn't too long after Lord Chaitanya's disappearance. Because Narathan Das Thakur was born one year after Lord Chaitanya left. And Jiva Goswami was still, I think, a very young man when Lord Chaitanya left also. The Lord Chaitanya met Sanatana Goswami Jiva at um, Kanai Not the Show. And Jiva Goswami was just a little boy. He was about seven years old at the time. Because Jiva Goswami was the nephew of Sanatana and, and Rupa Goswami. Their other brother, uh, he was the other brother that left early. He was the father of Jiva Goswami. Yes, Maharaj. And then when Shamananda Pandit was 
associating with Jiva Goswami, he was a young man and Jiva Goswami was elderly, correct? Um, your voice went to a, a very low, a very low uh, volume at that point. I'm sorry, and I was saying, um, sorry, I was saying when, when Jiva Goswami was elderly, that's when he met Shamananda Pandit. It appears that way, according yeah. to the sequence of events. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you find anything on Lord Jagannath, which which actually makes complete sense. Thank you, Garmesh. Hare Krishna. Vivek. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for today's uh, nice Leela. Um, I just wanted to share one thing and have one question, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, one that like Shyamananda Prabhu and like all these trio, Narutam Das, Srinivas Acharya, uh, I take them as an inspiration for book distribution because I heard that uh, whenever they used to um, distribute books, uh, they used they need to write that books on their own, like on the like papers, like handwritten all the verses. While we get all these books so nicely, so comfortably available, and we really don't understand the value many times. So that becomes very big inspiration for me that uh, how like like from such big difficulties all these uh, great souls have really gone through so uh, yeah if you've seen some of the old writings i've seen some of these original writings that are done on palm leaves it's uh it's extraordinary how it could ever happen <laughs> there are there are some of these writings that are preserved And you can see the original paper, which is like a, just, a, just a thin sheet of something. <laughs> some kind of, take some kind of bark from a leaf or a tree mostly. So do we have, Guru Maharaj, any of these like previous written papers available somewhere? Yeah, we have some original stuff. I've seen it. In Mayapur, Guru Maharaj, somewhere? Well, I know one devotee who showed me a lot of the original stuff by some of the some of the uh, great sages. We also have a, a place in uh, Calcutta, which is collecting, compiling, rewriting, and uh, librarian li putting everything in a library form in this uh, one place in Calcutta, they're collecting all Vaishnav literature. And uh, it's a grand project. It's been going on for, for at least 10 years now. And I was there. I saw some of the original writings, uh, which are not as far back as Lord Chaitanya, but they're at least two or 300 years old. Um, yeah, you can go there. Uh, I forgot the name of the project. Hari Sari Prabhu, Prabhupada's former uh, personal servant. He's very much involved in this particular project. And they, they put out pamphlets and literature advertising what they are doing and also inspiring the people to come forward with uh, donations and also any information they have about writings that they can investigate to see the sources and also include that into their libraries. It's quite an interesting project. And then I have a friend, everybody knows him. He puts out the KK Bindu magazine. His name is Madhavananda. Uh, he has many, many old writings also that are 
you know, hundreds of years old. You can hardly touch the paper because if you do, it might fall apart, you know. <laughs> it's just so fragile, some of it. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I just like feel like uh, really, really, uh, I think uh, this another uh, uh, pastime where Radharani, I have not heard this ever for any other uh, Prabhu or any other soul that Radharani herself gave this deity of Radha Shyam Sundar to Shamananda Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, that's the deity. That's one of the... Uh... Seven, seven main temples in Vrindavan is the Radha Sham Sindhu. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, I left out that part. Yeah, thank you for including that. That's interesting. That's a beautiful temple, Guru Maharaj, in Vrindavan. Like they do big celebration on Basant Panchmi. Mm. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a picture of that deity on my wall. Mm -hmm. So, Guru Maharaj, these Shamsundar Prabhu. Beautiful. And, uh, I... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, Guru Maharaj, I was just asking that uh, these Shamsundar Prabhu, was he like kind of a manjari in previous? What or it's just like mm. well it doesn't you know the writings that are the readings that I have come across mm. they say that uh, he took on the mood of a of Madhurya Ras under the guidance of Jiva Goswami and when, after his experience with Radharani and Vrindavan his guru was in Sakyaras because uh, Vridai Chaitanya, uh, Vridai Chaitanya was actually a disciple of Goridas Panda, who was Subal, Krishna's friend. The connection is there, but he, he was in Madhurya Ras. There was no, no question about it. You'd have to go to the Gorodhana Deshti Pika to see who he was in Krishna Lila. Sure. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, there is a question on Facebook. Um, Hare Krishna. Yeah, so uh, this Prabhu, Abhishek Singh Prabhu, uh, he is asking, uh, dear Maharaja, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please can you share about what book distribution they were doing? Were they distributing Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or glories of Lord Chaitanya? <laughs> it was the, uh, it was the, it was the uh, writings of the Goswamis, mostly. Ujwala Nilamani, Chaitanya Charita. Uh, um, parts of Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das. Um, mostly writings of uh, Jiva Goswami and uh, Rupa Goswami. Uh, there are letters in the back of one particular book on the life of uh, Jagannanda, Jagannanda Das. He was a disciple of, um, of Janavi Devi, the wife of um, Lord Nityananda. In those letters, there's an exchange between uh, Jiva Goswami and Srinivas Acharya and other personalities about the uh, accounts of book distribution, how many books they were distributing talking about book distribution, talking about book writing, like that. So these letters are the original letters between these, these Goswamis. And then they were found, recopied, and placed in this one particular book. 
So mostly the books were, you know, the works of the, the Goswamis like that. Um, you could say Sanatha Goswami's Brihad Bhagavatam Rita also. <laughs> Eva Goswami's Gopal Champu, who was Abhishek, my obeisance is to you, Abhishek Prabhu. We put a reply to the Maharaj. Uh, he didn't reply anything. Um, He, he can't speak, he's just writing, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, Guru, yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, he's, he's someone I know quite well. <laughs> Anybody have any more questions? Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. I am a little uh, intrigued about uh, the Shamananda Prabhu's birth name. He was given the name Dukhi Krishna. Um, my question is, what was the name given to him, his spiritual master, before Radharani gave him this new name? What was his initiated name? Do we know that? It doesn't say. I think his name was, uh, doesn't say. I, I, on all my readings, he is, he was, they dropped the name Dookie and he was named, he was just simply known as Krishna Das. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that, that his birth name and surely the spiritual master gave him another name. Uh, so I was a little curious about that. That would be that would be that would be completely logical, but all we know that he's he was called Krishna Das. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if that's all for today, we'll stop here and uh, maybe tomorrow or the, tomorrow I'll speak on the holy name. Because every, when we say every few weeks, we always include one particular class on the holy name. So tomorrow in the exclusive position of chanting the holy names of the Lord. That will be tomorrow's class. And then I have a series of classes coming up, which I'll announce uh, soon. We have now designed a calendar, which will be, I don't know if it's available yet. We just put it into uh, print where devotees can look at the calendar and you can get all the information about these talks, the timings, any changes in the timings, the different links that may appear due to connecting with other groups. Um, and also there'll be the topic for that particular day. So um, Lavanya and Tushar are working on that. I'm not sure when it'll be available for everyone and you'll have your own calendar and it'll be updated. And when it's updated, You'll be you'll see the update on your own calendar without making the changes. It'll come up automatically. So uh, that will give everyone a more clear, uh, you know, understanding of what's happening and everything about these these presentations. So. 
couple of days uh, i'm going to um share it with everyone in couple of days we are going to update uh, it finally and uh, share it to everyone anguru maharaj okay so well, in a few days it will be available for everyone and you'll find it very handy to use a simple word okay thank you very much ogori studio assemble the lonely bunch of copa to